what are you going to do after that? Can you take that body and bring it into a bank to get yourself a loan and present that as a business plan? Welcome back to Over the Top WME Wife, Mom, Entrepreneur. Today I want to do something totally different from what I've been doing because this is an impromptu because I was watching a YouTuber that I usually watch and this time they actually was two YouTubers that I usually watch and this time they were on a guest show show called I believe it was called the jump if that's not correct I'll leave it down below the youtubers that I watch is the roommate and the godfather Kevin Samuels he chimed in the topic was about only fan girls and the tragic future of women I'm gonna do a reaction to it I was just having all these thoughts and stuff like that coming to my head while I was watching and I was like you know what let me just put it out there because even though I'm not an expertise I have not been an entrepreneur for so long but what I do have is experience I've incorporated my own business my first business when I was 20 around 2021 20, producing fashion shows and then after that years later I opened up my other business incorporate my other business doing event planning with that I've gained so much experience and I just feel that it's something that I could talk on so I hope you guys enjoy my reaction to it and you know learn something from it I hope so here we go let's go ahead and do this reaction you need to be able to work and leverage with people who know more than you instead of looking her fees in the face like he doesn't know what he's talking about when he runs a almost million dollar business the guys on the podcast are on the verge of running a million dollar business and another person who knows how to do it is run most you're asking me questions to prove to you like i don't know what i'm talking about. i don't think you know what you're talking about regarding only fans that's for sure because but i do I know what i'm talking about as far as business help. and making money in regards to making money, money comes in waves and we all have to understand that. And if we all invest successfully, we could... Where are you investing? All, uh, Where are you investing? People, people are... Where are you investing? Average. Where are you investing? That's none of your business. It's, it's, I accept what you just said. But you said money comes in waves. Grant, we have to invest. It's taken. Where are some of the places you're investing? Yeah, says, I this is what this only fan economy has done it's let women with really low functioning knowledge no high value or high Excuse ticket skills. Me. that's not low functioning large knowledge uh well None let's talk okay every time i've asked you i've asked you any question about business and you've asked me a question instead of answer and i said what well, and if it's not you eat the meat spit out the bones but what only fans has done it's just created a bubble economy. Women are coming, rushing to OnlyFans, thinking that it's the new dot com, the new real estate, and they're realizing that there is no sustainable way to pro project this out for over five years. Now, maybe you don't know that knowledge, but I do. So, you I, can go to the club for like, we're not. You can't do it. But do you, but you understand that what he's not trying to hate, and so no. This is, but listen, I'm investing my only okay, fans okay. money into body contouring. He's asking my friend, "What is she investing in?" Yeah, he is trying to make her feel bad about that. I'm doing into I'm body. Ask, no, no, I asked her what she was investing in. I don't know whether it's good or bad. I didn't None of you guys pay my bills, so why would I tell you about my Okay, let me stop it right there. As you heard, one of the glam ladies said that she invests in body contouring. Let's back it up. When Kevin Samuels was trying to make a point in saying that, listen, the OnlyFans is a form of business that it's not new in the sense of it is fast money. It is not something that has been shown where it can develop over time into a business a longevity business and I gained from that when he was trying to say okay well what are you doing with the opportunity pretty much you're on OnlyFans you're getting all this money what are you doing with the opportunity as you can see one of the young ladies couldn't even say because the answer is probably obvious she's not really doing anything to make sure that if OnlyFans shuts down tomorrow she could survive that's not what she's trying to convey and the other young lady is saying that oh she invests in her body if you're trying to say that something is a business that means it is scalable it can be leveraged that business 
can turn into something else that could work for you without you having to work for it in the sense. In some ways, it could be something where you could write down it is a business plan. Kevin Samuel is saying that, look, and Hafiz was saying from the roommates club was saying that the OnlyFans is no different from the porn industry, is no different from entertainment, you know, um, any of the athletes and the rappers and stuff like that. It's fast money. What are you going to do with that money that's coming in to make sure you could live off of that in case anything happens to that career, that business? So when I was looking at that, I said, you know what? When I was starting my business, I made sure that I was able to leverage my opportunities. For example, I was able to be introduced to certain people that was not necessarily connected directly in the business. However, they were able to open up certain doors for me. So I used that leverage and I was able to, for example, not just produce fashion shows, but I was able to help other people in their business, not in the sense of, okay, well, I'm going to um, make millions of money off of it, but I looked at it as this is an opportunity for me to take my business to the next level. I was just saying that, you know, you have to leverage the opportunity that you have to make sure it can be scalable for you. So you could be able to build something off of that. And I know with the roommates, they were talking about investing in, you know, into the stock market and stuff like that. Yes, that's great. But however, there's different ways that you can make sure you are investing back into yourself to make sure your business can grow. Let me just play this other part. So you you guys could hear a little bit more about what Kevin Samuels was saying about the industry. They call themselves experts and business owners and everything else. You're sh online strippers would make a little bit of money. Congratulations. I'm good with escorts. I'm good with strippers. But when someone like Hafiz or myself tries to sit down and talk to you about your level of ignorance, you're offended. Your ignorance is what offends you. It's offensive to me that you're going to try to make this about men and sexism. This is what the world has done. It's got little pampered princesses who can get online, make some money, and think that they're on the same level as men who built this world, and they are not. That's what you just saw them leave, because they can't go get onto Wall Street, Main Street, anywhere, into a bank, into anybody's business to be taken seriously with their so-called business plan or their go-to-market strategy. You're taking what the world has given you, your creator has given you, and you put it online, Thank men for building the internet, the computers, the smartphone, and everything else that allows you to sit up in your luxury apartment and get paid for showing your feet. We did that. You didn't. And in 10 years, when no one wants to see your feet or your G-string or your tattoos or whatever else, a fees, the roommates, we will all be still running our businesses because we don't get emotional about business. When somebody tells us we have a hole in our game, we humble ourselves, we check ourselves, we get better. That's what men do because we have the we have the business of building the world. We can't fucking walk off like babies. Okay, we'll stop right there. The part that I really focus more on is the fact when he was talking about you're using your body to make money. Okay, what are you gonna do after that? Can you take that body and bring it into a bank to get yourself a loan and present that as a business plan? Sit down with other business partners and partner together to make any type of ventures. Can you do that if you're just relying on your body? Or let's say you're, you know, you're just relying on, uh, let's say, cause they're talking about OnlyFans, so I'll keep it on that, but I'm looking broader than that. In any type of business that you're doing, if you are just relying on that one asset that your business can do, you've already failed. So I'll give you an example because like I said, I could only speak from my experience of what I have in my experience is when I open up my event planning business, okay, there's tons of event planning business. However, I needed to make sure I stood out from the crowd. I did something that was, I wanted to do something that was different and I wanted to make sure I had different opportunities to bring in money. With my event planning business, I had pre-made packages for different parties. There was different theme parties for kids, different 
theme parties for adults. I packaged them together. They were able to pick it up or we could deliver it to them for an extra price. They had everything they need. They had, we took care of the invitations. They were able to pick up the tables, the chairs, the coverings. I mean, everything you could think of to host a party. Not only I was also lending out my services as being event planner, actually making sure that, okay, well, you might not want the package deal, which did come at a cheaper price, opposed to me planning out your event from scratch, which will cost more money. I was able to leverage the fact that I knew how to make certain decors and stuff like that. And I had a business license, a sales tax ID. So I was able to get different decorations and stuff like that for cheap. So that's what I did and I packaged them up. I leveraged that. I also charged for a consultation. So if you didn't want me to actually do your event planning, let's say you needed just a vision board put together, you just need an idea and you could take that idea and do it yourself, I charged consultation. So it was another way I scaled my business with that. So I was able to make sure I could scale my business and make sure that I was not running myself down to make sure the business was running on, uh, um, depending on me, on me to be able to make sure these event could only carried on with just me so i had different ways of scaling my business that's what kevin samuel is pretty much trying to say and the roommates are trying to say like what are you going to do with this opportunity that you have can you turn it into something else can you make sure that i don't know um i heard one person said that can you become the producer or can you be a recruiter in hiring girls you taking that or maybe you turn it into a class and you're like okay well these are the lessons that i've learned from coming into these business i'm the guru now you know there's different ways that you need to look at on trying to make sure you could scale your business because if you cannot scale your business it's not a good business i don't care what no one says if you cannot scale it, it's not a good business. If the business relies only on you, you're in trouble. It's going to fail and it's gonna fail fast. And I've relearned that from listening to Patrick Bet David, Your Next Five Moves, one of my favorite, favorite books. He talks about making sure that you put system in place to make sure your business can run without you being there. I hope that makes sense to you guys and I really enjoyed listening to that podcast and I hope it's an eye opener for many of you guys out there, especially new entrepreneurs that are coming up. You know, I'm so excited to see it. You guys have to make sure you're looking into the business to see how you could expand it, how it could be bigger from the little idea that you take it from. If you cannot take those ideas and make it bigger to where it could last at least 10 plus years, don't do it. You know, just don't do it. Take your time to see how you can scale it because it's not gonna be worth it. So my baby boy is woken up. I'm going to do another video. I hope that helps you guys. Thank you. And let me know at the bottom if you feel that a business, for it to be a business or good business, it needs to be scalable. Let me know down at the bottom if you feel that's true or not and also i want to know if this is something that you guys enjoy because i kind of enjoy doing something different like this every once in a while so this is going to be my segment where i guess i call it my reaction from wife mom entrepreneur so i hope you guys enjoy it and um i have more i like to talk to you guys down below bye bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>